Hey there everybody. Today we'll be working with systemd targets to cover a couple of RHCSA exam objectives. The first one here is to boot systems into different targets manually, and the second one is to configure systems to boot to a specific target automatically. Alright, so this should be pretty simple. Let's get down and do this. We can start here by checking what systemd targets we have at our disposal with systemctl list dash units, and we'll set the type equal to target, and we'll throw the all flag on here this time. And this all flag is useful to additionally show us targets that are not exactly active right now. And as you can see, there are quite a few of them out of the box, but not all of these are ones that you would necessarily want to boot straight into. So here are some major targets that I'd like to highlight because they create a distinct state for the system that you might actually need to use it in. So first, that would be the emergency target. This is pretty useful. Next is the graphical target. This is the one that we're in right now. What else? Uh, we've got the multi-user target right here. This is commonly used for servers. And finally, uh, there's the rescue target. All right. So we can take a look at some of these with uh, systemctl at and then pick on a unit file for the target. So I'll just pick on multi-user.target. There we go. And yeah, uh, we can just take a look at this for a little bit. Um, so targets, much like many other units, they have dependency properties. So that's where these requires and after keys come from. And you'll also notice down here at the bottom is this allow isolate key, which is set to yes. And this allows us to boot straight into this target without completely restarting the machine. In fact, uh, we can look at which targets have this key by just running something like grep and then allow isolate. And we'll point that to user lib system D system and we'll just glob for all of the dot target files. There we go. And yeah, you can see there are quite a few of them, uh, but you know, uh, the ones that I mentioned specifically fall into this category as well, like emergency and graphical. And you know what? Let me actually just show you some isolating now. So if I run sudo systemctl isolate multi user dot target just like that when i run this it's going to stop a bunch of services i have to enter my password it's going to stop a bunch of services and kick me out of my desktop environment into the virtual console terminal and i mean that's pretty cool right but keep in mind that this is not a persistent change i can log in here real quick and i can show you that if i run system ctl get dash default if I can spell that, default, that uh, my default target is the graphical target right now. So that's where the system will want to go when I boot it up normally. If I wanted to change that, though, I could run sudo systemctl set-default, and then the name of the target I'd like to boot into by default. So I could put in something like multi-user.target. And remember that there is a dash between the words multi and user. Sometimes I forget that. And I'll enter in my password here, and there we go. So now, uh, if I reboot the node, it's always going to come up to the multi-user mode, which does not include the desktop environment. I'll just reboot just to show you. And by the way, I guess like multi-user mode, like I said, it's the most common target that servers run in. So uh, there is a little bit of how to set the default target so that you automatically boot straight into it. Just like that. And now, let's get into how to boot into different targets manually. So say you were facing some problems and you needed to boot into the rescue target or the emergency target, right? Well, to do that, we need to explicitly say that we want to go to that target in the kernel boot parameters. But quick forewarning, you'll need to supply the root password to go into those modes, uh, like the modes I just mentioned, emergency and rescue. So. Let me just log in here real quick. So if I do a sudo head-n1 etc shadow, I just want to show you very literally 
that my root account does not have a password set up. So I would be a little stuck if I tried to go to the emergency or the rescue target. Okay, so to make sure I can actually show you this next part, I need to set a root password. So sudo password root, and I'll set it to something memorable. Pretty terrible password, but that's okay. And there we go, now I have a root password. And so if I restart the node, uh, sudo reboot, and make sure to mash the F8 key, there we go. So the grub menu appears. And here, I just need to select the boot option I want to edit, so that'll be the first one. Hit the E key to edit the parameters. And we'll go down to the Linux line, press Control e to jump to the end, and I'm going to want to add systemd.unit equals, and then put in the name of a target that I want to boot into. So like I said, that would be the emergency target or the rescue target. Now, emergency mode is a very minimal mode, and it's just going to try to mount the root file system as read-only. And, well, uh, rescue mode, on the other hand, interrupts the boot process further along where to it actually uh, tries mounting some other file systems and stuff. But let's try both. So I'll just type in emergency here dot target. Remember that dot target part. And, yeah, I'll just press Control x to boot. And we'll see what we end up with here. All right, so it says you're in emergency mode and we are prompted to give the root password as expected. So I'll just type that in. And there we go. Now you're free to tinker around and figure out what's causing your system trouble. So you'll see here, if I check the mounts with DF, that the root file system is indeed mounted. But um, if I check mount and I grep for root file system, uh, you'll see here that it's actually mounted as read-only. So if you wanted to get stuff done on your system partition, you would probably want to remount it as read-write, like this. Mount-o remount, comma, read-write on my root. And there we go. Now if I check again, it's in read-write mode. Okay? So... Um, I mean, emergency mode is pretty beneficial when there's an issue with mounting other stuff than your root file system, and you're trying to track what's going on. And speaking of tracking, the system journal still works in emergency mode, so you can still use journal ctl to check for errors this way as well, right? So uh, now let's just try rescue mode next. Um, I'm going to reboot here. Wait a moment. Make sure to mash the F8 key. There we go. And now I'm just going to edit this one and go down to the Linux line. And this time I'll type in systemd.unit equals and then rescue.target. There we go. So I'll press Control X to boot up again. And now... Uh, we should be in a pretty similar place as before. Uh, we need to enter in the root password. You'll see that this message got a little bit flooded with all of these other verbose uh, information. But that's okay. Now we can still type it in. So I'll type in my password. And there we go, I got my shell. And now if I check DF to look at the mounts, uh, we can see that uh, it indeed attempted to mount more stuff, like our boot partition and our EFI system partition. Okay? And also if I check mount and I grep for root, uh, we can see that it's mounted in read-write mode as well. So why might you want this state? Well, maybe you need to regenerate your init ramfs for whatever reason, so uh, it would be beneficial to have the boot partition already mounted for you since that's where that archive goes. So like for example, I could just say it dash bf this is going to regenerate the init ramfs real quick. And I'll just take a second. And so the init ramfs contains copies of some of your important system files, such as the modprobe.d directory. So, like, for example, I could run ls init rd and grep for the directory modprobe. 
And this is going to show us that indeed the modprobe.d directory is in the init ramfs archive. And this is where you would put in settings for various kernel modules. So maybe if you were trying to fix a driver configuration that was causing the machine to hang early in boot, uh, rebuilding the init ramfs would be one good place to check. Not that that's really like an RHCSA thing, that's more of just a general troubleshooting uh, piece of advice, I guess. And in terms of other stuff, uh, maybe you might need to disable a problematic service. So you could run systemctl, disable, and then pick on a service like httpd. Not that there was anything wrong with it, this is just an example. And there we go, now it's uh, disabled. And uh, yeah, so you can test drive your changes now by either logging out of the root shell to continue booting the system, or you can just run systemctl default to move the system to the default target that you set. So yeah, it's going to jump straight into multi-user mode like I just set at the beginning, but I could change that back to graphical here by just logging in. And then I'll just say systemctl set default to graphical dot target type in my password and now if i do another sudo systemctl default we're going to get dropped into the display manager okay so on that note i hope this video helped demonstrate some of the systemd target objectives and see you later